All right, I got a new piece of hardware in. This is the Creality CR Scan Ferret 3D Scanner, a super portable 3D hand scanner that even comes with its own low profile carrying case. Uh, in this first video, I'm gonna use it connected to my laptop. We're gonna capture small and medium sized objects, but in the next video, we'll use the portable method with my phone to capture larger objects inside and outside. They say it has advanced structured light technology for excellent performance even in bright sunlight. Uh, so I'll test that out again in the next video. Uh, speaking of portability, the handle slash tripod is actually a rechargeable power bank. So you just mount your phone on top of that, the ferret on that, connect the wires, and you're off and scanning. In fact, while I'm sitting here, let me go ahead and hook this thing up. So like I said before, here is your power bank and here is the phone holder. So basically you've got your rechargeable battery here. You've got your phone that you're going to look at. You've got your app on your phone. I'm gonna go ahead and take my phone, make sure the plug is over here. So we'll just plug that in just like so. And then you have this cord here for the portability version. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the scan ferret. And then we'll plug the ferret into our phone here with USB-C. And then this cord right here goes to the power bank. You'll see that light up. If you can see it, yeah, there you go. You can see it light up. So I'll just go ahead and load up the software. And you can see we're ready to go. So all we have to do is say new scan, tell it what type of scan we want. Again, small, medium, or large, high quality, good textures, etc. You just walk around watching your phone as it captures all the data. And then once you're done, you say process my scan, and then you can go ahead and share the model again. This is all stuff we'll get into more in the next video, but just wanted to show you how easy it was to kind of hook up. Oh, and this is a Galaxy S22 Ultra phone. So seems to process just fine. Uh, the software is easy to use. You basically tell it if you're scanning an object or a face or a human, what size the object is, if it's small, medium, or large. And if the object is mostly shapes or covered in textural detail, if you want fast accuracy or high quality, and whether or not you want to add UVs to your object so you can apply the color data to your 3D model from the point cloud. Uh, you do have manual settings you can dial in for both camera exposure and IR exposure, as well as how the object is processed basically how the point cloud data is optimized, how that point cloud is turned into geo, and how that geometry is textured. But I didn't play around with these settings that much since the default parameters worked for what my needs are. Uh, I will say it's not a miracle scanning machine. All the same pitfalls that come with photogrammetry apply to the results you'll get from the scan ferret. So anything reflective, anything transparent, has a bunch of hollow parts, has fur or hair, these are really tricky to capture and may not work. Uh, I'll also point out it does take a few tries to get a feel for what the scanner needs in order to get a successful scan, um, and that can be irritating. I found that moving back a little bit and getting a general overview works a little bit better, and then kind of getting into that perfect zone, your mileage may vary. It just comes with practice. Don't be irritated right out of the gate. Get in there, feel for what gets you the best results, and try and stick with that. Um, finally, I do go through and do a cleanup pass on the Xbox controller. I actually live stream the process if you want to follow along in ZBrush with me. And as you can see, for my purposes, I've got plenty of data in order to knock out a quick prop in no time. Uh, anyway, stay tuned for the unboxing and me running it through its paces. I've been waiting a minute for this one. I'm so excited. So here's my CR scan ferret from Creality. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this box and you can see that uh, it's a pretty, let me zoom out just a little bit, give ourselves a little more real estate here. It's a pretty compact form factor. It's got a nice carrying case, little strap. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a peek here. Uh, we got our user manual. I'm gonna have this over to the side so I can sound smart uh, while I'm talking about it, while we talk about these pieces over here. Uh, but here's instruction manual. Right here we have the tripod. So you can see these little legs stick out and you can sit on this tripod. But the cool thing about this tripod is it's actually a battery. So here's the specifications on that. So basically what you'll do is if you want to carry this around, which you can connect this to a computer or, uh, well, you know what, let's go ahead and put this together. So we have our tripod slash handheld battery right here that'll power the scanner. And then here's our mobile phone clip. And then here's our snail gimbal. So, and then also here's the scanner itself. And of course, before we use this, we wanna peel, uh, peel this uh, protective cover off, but I'll leave that on for now. And then right up here in this 
section right here is all the wires. So right here you can see cable for computer. So you can plug this into a computer and have the computer do all the processing and capturing and uh, data. So you can just use this. It's a USB 3 here and you want to make sure you're using a USB 3 port on your computer. It even says in the instructions, don't plug this in slowly. If you plug it in slowly, it, it might pick up, you know, the first four channels or something like that and it might pick it up as USB 2.0. So make sure you plug it in quickly. It recognizes USB 3.0 on your computer. And then this is your computer cord that you can take, you know, from the scanner right to your computer and just use that. If you want to go outside uh, or be a little more portable with this handheld scanner and use your phone, we have an Allen wrench for tightening uh, some of the, the components in here to tighten this up on your snail gimbal. But this wire right here, it's kind of a two in one. So essentially this one with the hook is gonna go into your scanner. This one will connect to the uh, power supply or you know, it, this could be a power supply from a portable battery or you know, obviously just charge the tripod using the USB-C and then when you wanna power your scanner, you plug this in, this goes to the scanner and then this goes to your phone. So let's go ahead and set this up so it's a little less abstract. So it says number one, let's go ahead and take the scanner and let's twist it onto here and secure it. There we go, nice and snug. It's got a little shoe, camera shoe slider on here which slides right onto the camera phone mount. I'm using an Android phone. This is a Galaxy S22. It does have a case on it. Let's see if it fits. Just like so, nice. And there's my doggy being a bad girl sitting on the coffee table. <laughs> and then of course this fits nicely right onto here. And let's go ahead and connect this up. So again, USB 3.0 into the scanner. This one into our phone. And then this one into the power supply. And look how easy that was to set up. I can go and I can start scanning Man, let me, let me zoom out a little bit more. Uh, running out of real estate here. But immediately, I'm, I'm ready to be a portable scanner. I just gotta install the software on my phone and I'm ready to go. Again, super easy to set up. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this back into the super portable case. Look how cool this is. Uh, I'm so excited to give this a, a try out. I'm gonna try it out with a computer. I'm gonna try it out with the phone. We're gonna scan a ton of stuff with this thing. So we'll get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a name. The location, default location is fine. We're gonna keep the object on normal since it's not a face or a body. I wanna say the object size is gonna be about medium, just a maquette size, and then it's gonna be geometry. There's no real texture on it. So since it's just a sculpt, we'll keep it on geometry. Uh, we don't really need color for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say new scan. And I'm just using the overhead light right now. So we're going to I'm going to be looking at the screen, looking for that perfect distance, and then clicking the plus sign to start our scan. And I've also got a lazy Susan on here so I can be turning this uh, as I go. So here we are at the perfect distance. Everything's green. I'm going to start our scan here and then just be turning this as we go. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and say complete. Yes. And if I don't want to do one step, I can skip this and go uh, down here to optimization manual. And then of course the mesh processing here, I'm just going to say, go ahead and just give me one click. Yes. All right. Looks like my model is done and uh, ah, quality looks pretty good. So I'm going to go down here. You can see we can rescan or we can export. I'm going to go ahead and just export this onto one of my documents is fine. You can do PLY, STL or OBGM. I'm going to stick with STL. I'll call this maquette and I'm going to do another test where I turn on some lights. All right so I've turned two softbox lights on. I'll go ahead and show them to you. So here's one softbox, here's the other. Uh, just to see if this helps at all. I'm not certain if it will. I'm just trying to get a gauge for what's going to be good or not. So we'll do another pass. All right I think I'm good on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit complete. Yes. And we'll, we'll do another full, full process. process. Yes. yes. And uh, in this one, I apparently I left color on, which I don't really need, but 
I mean, it's not a bad thing to have available, so uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and keep it. Export this. And we'll do this one as an OBJ. So I'm gonna compare the STL quality with the OBJ quality. This is the one without, this is just with my overhead light on in my room. I uh, did a pretty good job. I'm gonna go in here to, let's go ahead and go out of edit mode and we'll hit Control N, clear our canvas. And I'm gonna go in here to import and we're gonna bring in the OBJ version now. And certain this one has UVs because we uh, left color the color setting on, which means it's gonna have a UV map and a texture map. So we're gonna go in here to texture import. We'll grab the PNG that comes with it. We'll select it, we'll flip it vertically, and then we'll go down to our texture settings and we'll say load in that texture so there we go we have our texture map let's go ahead and change our material out with skin shader 4. so here is our obj with our uh, uvs and then here's our stl so we'll go ahead and name this uh, maquette obj and we'll call this one maquette stl and i kept the default setting so whatever you know when you hit the little finger icon and it goes through and it remeshes for you or it optimizes your point cloud then it meshes converting the point cloud into triangles then it textures it and then it you know is ready for export i just kept the default settings for those so here's the obj i'm going to go ahead and say insert and we'll grab the stl here and i'm going to line these up real quick now, as far as the color version here, I didn't really need the color of the clay or anything to show through, and you can see the results here. It's got a lot of baked in lighting, obviously not taken under ideal conditions where I'm doing you know, very diffuse lighting to get no shadow information or anything like that. I just took it straight up as is. So I'm not expecting anything great from the color since I didn't really go into capture with color in mind. Um, but as far as you know, this reflective surface back here, it actually worked really well. Didn't seem to have too much trouble uh, with the metal here. And of course, I didn't pay too much attention to uh, the metal armature there. So if I go ahead and turn off our texture here, and I'm going to go in here to transform, and we'll say split screen. So again, our OBJ had the two soft boxes turned on for maybe better lighting. And then the OBJ got uh, UVs. But as far as the overall quality, I say the better lighting wins out, probably because there may have been a, a ton of shadow in these recessed areas that it got a little bit confusing. Um, so you can see it did a little better job under the neck. Although, you know, the, the second go around, I had a little better handle on how to move around the space. And I also got rid of the tripod, which made it easier to kind of float around. So maybe that's part of it too. I guess in this case, having a little better lighting uh, did help. We'll go ahead and say, this is gonna be our flower sack. It is normal object, medium size, about the size of a shoe. We're gonna switch this from geometry to texture. And if you do start a rescan, make sure you double check this. I think it defaults back to geometry every time in my experience so far. Uh, color, we'll go ahead and keep because we wanna keep this texture. And then we're gonna say new scan. And then of course we position this so that we're perfect enough. I'm gonna try to get something just clean behind it. We'll go ahead and say click to start the scan here. And again, just try to stay in that perfect range and then just work our way up. All right, I think we're good. So we'll go ahead and hit complete. Yes. Now what you wanna do is hover over these buttons. Don't click this little arrow icon. It's gonna go ahead and mesh it. So we're gonna say, uh, just to look at these, we'll say manual point pitch. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but we'll go ahead and drop this down a little bit and then go ahead and click it to pro start optimizing and going through that process. All right. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and we'll just go ahead and say we got color on, we'll export. 